Hypoplastic left heart syndrome means that the left side of the heart has not developed correctly. Um, in general, uh, the way the heart normally develops is that we have the right side of the heart and the left side of the heart, and both are individual pumps. And they're both about the same size in, in a normal child. Um, in hypoplastic left heart syndrome, the left side of the heart is severely underdeveloped and the right side of the heart uh, is enlarged. And um, this creates a real difficulty for the, the circulation as it should happen, both inside the womb, but also after birth especially. The vast majority of children who have hypoplastic left heart syndrome are treated after birth, not in the womb. And that's because the vast majority of them are stable enough um, that they can be born, they can have a regular delivery, and be started on medication right after birth, and calmly taken to their first operation in the first few days of life. HLHS is frequently diagnosed reasonably early in pregnancy, and most commonly we'll see that diagnosis around 18 to 20 weeks when the mother goes to have an ultrasound. So this is an ultrasound diagnosis. Once you have that diagnosis, you know that immediately after birth, you're in the first week of life, you're gonna have a stage one Norwood procedure, which is a major open heart surgery to really reconstruct the aortic arch that comes out of the heart and provides blood flow to the body. I think we have excellent cardiovascular surgery that's guided by Dr. Charles Frazier, who is our chief of congenital heart surgery here and he has had experience since 1995 of performing this Norwood procedure. Our success rate is approximately 85% of these babies survive, so we have excellent surgical results. We have an interventional cath team that's led by Dr. Uh, Ng, who is accustomed to doing this procedure in newborn babies. So we have not only the cath interventional team, the surgery team, and we have excellent imaging to diagnose this congenital heart disease. And so that team has to work together to get a really good outcome. So I think it's a team multidisciplinary approach that we have here at Texas Children's Hospital. Well, about one in 10,000 births will have a hypoplastic left heart syndrome and only about 10% of those actually have a defect that would require intervention in utero. And that would be the situation where you've got an intact atrial septum or perhaps a critical aortic valve stenosis. And a critical aortic valve stenosis is in the spectrum of hypoplastic left heart syndrome, but those babies uh, mid-gestation have a very dilated left ventricle, and unless you relieve the aortic obstruction, by the end of pregnancy, that ventricle can be very small. So there's a subset of hypoplastic left heart syndrome that would really require intervention, and that could be critical aortic valve stenosis, or an intact atrial septum, or a very restrictive atrial septum. HLHS is uh, clearly a significant problem after birth. In utero, because of the holes inside the, uh, the, the heart, and specifically the atrial septal uh, defect or the normal hole in the heart that we see uh, in a normal fetus, the baby can function perfectly well with a uh, single ventricle, with the right ventricle, and the blood is circulated throughout the body by that ventricle. However, once a baby is born, the fetal circulation stops, the newborn circulation begins, and then the left ventricle becomes absolutely crucial to survival. And that's when these babies get into uh, to real trouble. By trying to do a procedure in the womb, what we're hoping to do is to alter the way the child will behave at birth. We're hoping to create a hole in that wall that is completely closed, and by doing that, we're hoping that the child will be born and be instantly much more stable than if that wall were completely closed. That gives us the hours or days that we need to carefully plan that first operation and do it calmly with the child uh, being much more stable going into the operation rather than going in the middle of the night with a child who is critically ill and in very poor condition to survive the operation. In general, these procedures either involve placement of a balloon across the valve and then bringing it back to dilate the valve or the placement of a stent which is to blow up the balloon with a, uh, a metal stent on the outside of the balloon that then holds its shape. So if we want to keep a hole in the heart open then the optimum way to do that is to, to put in a balloon with a stent on the outside, blow up the balloon and the stent then remains distended and open we deflate the balloon and remove everything and the stent remains in place. The only chance for a baby with this kind of uh, condition is to create that hole in utero so that the baby has a reserve or time after delivery 
to allow the cardiac surgeons to create the, the or start to create the definitive repair. The procedure basically involved having to create a hole um, in that wall of the heart that was completely closed. Well, this is a very specialized procedure, I and mean, it's not a procedure that one can do by oneself at all. Uh, it is a procedure that requires coordination and teamwork from four different services and probably a lot more people in between, the coordinators. Um, the, the, the fetal ultrasound uh, per specialist will provide the imaging using the echocardiogram. Um, the next, well before that you have the anesthesia service who will provide uh, the anesthesia for the mother as well as for the baby. Uh, then you have the uh, fetal echo uh, specialist providing the imaging so that the uh, maternal fetal medicine specialist can um, use that image to direct the needle uh, through the uh, uterus uh, of the mother, through the chest wall of the fetus and into the heart. And then once he's there, then we come in. Uh, we're the interventional cardiologists who would then uh, get the wires into position, uh, put the balloons and if indicated stents into place uh, to open up uh, the atrial septum or the aortic valve. What we aimed to do was not just enter the heart, which the heart would be about the size of a, of, you know, a, a large grape or something like that, but actually not just poke inside the heart, but poke through that very thick wall and end up in that very small left atrium behind that wall. And that entire left atrium was more like the size of about a pea. So we're talking about trying to aim for a very, very small structure, and in aiming for a small structure, having to poke through a very thick wall to get through it. So this is the best environment that you could do a procedure like this in to allow the baby a full recover in the best incubator in the world, which is the mom's uterus. The Texas Children's Fetal Center and Heart Center is uniquely positioned in this region of the uh, country for a number of reasons. This is not a procedure that should be done in isolation. This requires a huge team of people, including pediatric cardiology, pediatric cardiothoracic surgery, maternal fetal medicine, all of the imaging modalities, the uh, high sophistication of the uh, operating room environment, and a coordinated team. There are not many centers in the world that can have this kind of uh, pool of talent and resources to be able to do this sort of thing. So the Houston community and, and, and the southern United States is really well served by uh, the team approach that we have built here with the heart center and the fetal center all in, one, all in one institution. We have planned for years to do this procedure. You need to watch a functional, well-practiced team in action. Well, the Children's Hospital of Boston uh, was the first center to publish uh, their work. And so they are the, the experts with this procedure at this time. We took two of our patients from Texas, two Boston Children's, watched them do the procedure. Just an incredible advance of technology to be able to not only see what's going on inside the baby's heart, um, exactly be able to tell how thick that wall is, where the chambers are, uh, be able to guide the needle exactly with precise visualization using the ultrasound to see where that needle is going and to be precisely able to aim that needle where we want it to go. It really is just an amazing thing that we can do these sort of things nowadays. Um, it's, it's, it's really kind of awe-inspiring to think that we now can help children who are in, in very dire need in the womb and do something to help them uh, have a more normal birth and more normal first few hours or days of life.